Hey guys, today I'm going to be walking you through how to create a simple game AI. So the first thing we need to look at is what exactly does an AI do? And I've broken this down into pretty much two really simple steps. Uh, most AI will move and then attack. And oftentimes it will be some sort of mixture of this. Different enemy types may have different weapons, so they may attack close to the player or far away from the player. Or sometimes the AI will just try to touch the player and that will cause damage of some sort. So today I'm going to be walking you through um, an AI that I developed for a game I made, which is sort of like an open world Galaga style game. So it involves a spaceship flying around. There's not really a lot of obstacles or anything to hit, which is gonna make our AI job a little bit easier. But I'm basically going to show you how to create a spaceship that can fly around, shoot at the player, um, and that looks believable and is kind of a first stepping stone towards creating more complex AI. So when creating AI, we often run into um, a particular problem. Here I have an example of sort of a programming game. I've seen these uh, becoming more kind of common. So here I've grabbed an example of a programming tutorial sort of game where you can program very basic AI. Um, one of the problems with this example here is that this sort of makes it seem like you can provide really basic or simple instructions and your AI will kind of follow those instructions se sequentially. And then it's like, oh, that's all you have to do and you can make an AI. Uh, the, re the reality is actually quite a bit trickier than this. You can maybe set up your own system so that you can break it down to be this simple, but generally you're going to run into a problem almost immediately when you start programming an AI, and that is something I like to call the human speed problem. So when you're writing the code for an AI, the code is actually running about 60, 30 to 60 times a second. So what that means is if you wanna move the AI to a particular point, and let's say for simplicity, it takes one second to get there, you have to have the AI move, you know, one sixtieth of the way to that point, just to get it to take one entire second for the AI to get there. And so because of this, when you're programming AI, you're working on a really, really, really small time scale. And that can actually be really tricky because when you're making AI, it's usually going to interact with the player in some way. And you can't have the AI, for example, teleporting around the map or moving too quickly. And so because of this, it makes the challenging, it makes the problem really challenging from the beginning because you're working in a loop and you're working at a very small time scale. So I'm going to walk you through an AI that I created that deals with some of these problems and will give you a really good foundation of how to make future AI. All right, so here we are in the code for this project. And the first thing I want to show you guys is the AI class um, called Simple AI. So there's a lot going on here with regards to updating the game and drawing the game. Uh, typically a game will have an update loop where all the logic is and then a draw loop where it will uh, draw the images on screen. I'm not going to cover the details of that since this tutorial is mostly focused on creating an AI. And also, I think there's a lot of resources out there to figure the rest of this stuff out. It's just when you get to the AI portions, things start to get a little fuzzy and sometimes it's difficult to know where to start. So I'm gonna look here at some of the most important variables that the simple AI class has and kind of cover what they mean so that when we're using them later, you'll understand. Uh, so starting at the top, I have three different uh, enums here. So in case you don't know what an enum is, it's essentially a series of options. Um, it's kind of like, you could potentially put these in Booleans and have a bunch of true false statements, but this is more like a setting. So a movement state here can have stopped, free move, move to position, combat idle, combat active, and idle. 
Um, I also have a hostility state, which only has two states, hostile and friendly. And then I have um, the firing state of the AI, which can be constant, so it's nonstop firing, random, so it fires randomly, or target in sites where it only shoots uh, when there's a target that's in front of it. There's also a ceasefire one. I'm sure you can figure out what that one is. And so, yeah, so immediately here we have sort of the state of the AI. So what happens is in the update loop, we check the values of these, and depending on the values, we are going to then have our AI go through and do something, right? So if it's idle, it pretty much just spins in a circle, just as an example. Um, if it's got a hostility state set to hostile, what it'll do is it'll look for a target and then try to destroy that target subsequently. Um, and then firing state, pretty obvious. That's just um, the state of the guns, uh, how it determines when to shoot, basically. So anyway, we have these three states, and these are sort of the decision-making part of the AI. Uh, when the AI changes, we have logic that will change these particular states. And by changing the states of the AI, that's sort of where the uh, intelligent part comes in. So some other variables we have here. We have target waypoint. So if we tell the AI to go to a certain position, uh, this would be the position. It just holds an X and a Y coordinate um, via a vector two object. So we have X, Y. Um, and then we have a target. So that's a some sort of game object. And usually the AI will try to destroy its target. We could also maybe have a target that it just follows around, such as we could program it to follow around the player. And then we have um, a wanted rotation. So basically the wanted rotation is what direction we want the AI to eventually point in, um, but it only moves towards that rotation, let's say a few degrees per tick, for example. So it might move in half degree increments 60 times a second. And we might say, hey, point towards 90 degrees. And so it'll slowly turn and turn and turn until it reaches its wanted rotation. So that's sort of one trick is you want to store what you want your AI's final state to be. And then in your update loop, you kind of figure out incrementally how to get there. Um, we'll cover this in a little more detail later, but I just wanted to introduce that idea. Um, and then we have a lot of other things. We have a timer that determines how often the AI can shoot its gun, since we don't want it spamming out a billion bullets. Um, and we have kind of some difficulty settings, bullets to fire. Turrets, we're not going to cover those, but uh, I'm working on a battleship AI that has turrets on it. Um, and then we have a list of items that it'll drop when it's destroyed. Uh, we're also not going to cover that here either.